Hey guys, how's it going? It's Delmer again and welcome back to my channel. So today I'm really excited because I'm going to continue the videos with AR Foundation. I'm also going to be showing you a new tool that is going to allow you to run AR Foundation applications right within Unity. What does that mean? Well, you're going to be able to see it behind the scenes where we're going to be able to use the editor and actually see what's happening with our devices right in Unity. This means that we can test plane detection, we can test point clouds, we can test meshing, image tracking, and many more features that I'm going to be showing you in this video. So let's jump into Unity and start working on it. All right, guys, so today I'm really excited, like I said in the beginning of the video, because we're going to be installing the AR Foundation Editor Remote. You guys know how much I needed a tool like this, and I'm glad that there's a developer that it's providing us with that tool, and you can get it from the, from the Unity Asset Store. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to go ahead and set it up and show you everything that is required. So he also walks you through all the different steps. Also, what it supports, it supports meshing, face tracking, plane tracking, image tracking, depth tracking, which is cool because you can use the AR Point Cloud Manager, feature points, and ray cast. Also, anchor, session subsystem, camera subsystem, and I'm pretty happy with the results. I tested all the different scenes and everything works great. He also has documentation in here and limitations, so make sure that you go through that process. So, what I'm going to do is I'm going to create a project from scratch and we're going to be installing it together. So what I'm going to do is let's go ahead and use 2018.4.1. And the reason why I'm using that version is because I tested it with that version. I haven't tested it with the 2020. So you're more than welcome to test it as well. So I'm going to just call it AR Foundation Remote. I'm going to put it here and select in 3D. Let's go ahead and click on Create so that it can create the project. Once the project is created, we're going to be just basically installing that component, which I already downloaded. So just have it right here. I'm using this version. And then in your case, it's just going to come from the, from the asset store. So you're going to get a file like this. It's going to prompt you to import it. And then we'll just continue on as soon as the project is done. OK, so it looks like the project got created. So the first thing that you're going to need to do is obviously install this. So we're just going to double click it. It's going to open up and show us everything that it comes with. He has various examples in here for anchors, you know, actually face tracking, mesh classification. So actually, you look at those and then click on import. All right, guys, so it looks like we got it already imported. So one of the things that you need to look at, if you go ahead and expand the plugins, you're going to see that it has all these different files. And we're going to be looking at those files, but I just want you to know that's where things are getting put in. Then the next thing that we're going to do is install the AR Foundation package, the XR components for AR Kit. So let's go ahead and go into the package manager. And I'm going to be changing this. Actually, unit registry is fine. And let's go ahead and click in here. I'm going to search for AR Foundation. Foundation, if I can type. There we go. And then I'm going to do 4.0.a. Let's go ahead and update it and install it. Looks like I already had it installed, so that's why it shows me update it. OK, so the next component that we're going to be installing is going to be the actual plugin for AR Kit. And if you were using AR Core, you would do AR Core. I'm going to be using AR Kit because that's the one that I'm going to be testing with. And there's going to be two components for AR Kit because we're going to do face tracking. We're also going to be installing the AR Kit XR plugin. So let's go ahead and install this one first. All right, so it looks like that finished. Let's go ahead and do AR Kit face tracking. Again, make sure that we align the versions for that 0 that 8 with the same version of the AR Kit face tracking plugin. All right, guys, so it looks like we're done with packages. Let's go ahead and close out of this. So now the next thing that we need to do is we're going to go to File, Build Settings. And by default, it's going to be PC, Mac, and Linux. But I'm going to change this to iOS because we're going to have to build what's called the AR Companion app, which is similar to what ARKit did a long time ago. It basically was an application that went on your device. Let me just click in here. And then when that application goes to the device, it's how you can send and stream the video from your iOS device or Android device to the actual Unity editor. So the developer that created this plugin did something similar where we're going to be installing the companion, once we have the companion, we're going to be able to connect and communicate via IP address to the editor from the iOS application. All right, so it looks like that is done. Now we have the iOS as a target. Again, if you're doing Android, make sure they change it to Android. So the next thing that we're going to do is let's go ahead and go into player settings. And there are going to be a couple of things in here that are really important to consider. So we're going to go into the plugin management and go into enable AR kit. Then you're going to go into desktop, which might seem weird. But the reason why we're doing this is because we're going to be running this in, in actually in our computer, right? So we're going to be installing a provider that the developer that created this asset created, which is called AR Foundation Remote. 
So let's go ahead and make sure that we have that checked. So just to reiterate, we're going to have the AR Foundation Remote selected under the actual desktop platform. And then in iOS, let's make sure that we do AR Kit. So now the last thing that we need to do for iOS is we're going to go into Player. And there's a couple of settings in here that we need to change. We're going to need to change the actual AR Kit. So we're going to be enabling this required AR Kit support, which is going to be populating this. I also need to change the minimum version here, which is going to be 11, because that's what we need for the actual AR to work on AR, AR kit. And then the architecture, this is going to be ARM64. So I'm going to be just changing those. And I think everything else seems to be OK. We can leave those names just like that. I think that's fine. And I think that's everything. Let's go ahead and go back in here. So now on the plugin side of things, there's a couple of things that you need to do. So if you go into the installer, there's going to be different options in here that, that he's providing to you. One of them is going to be install the AR Companion app. And we're going to need this because we're going to need to install it in our devices. In my case, I have an iOS device here, which is an iPhone 11. And I also have the iPad Pro. So what I went in, when I did is actually click here, which is going to install. It's actually going to create an Xcode project, just like if we were to do file build. And then it'll create a build for us. He's doing similar thing, but he's just basically packaging a scene that he created for the companion app. And then what we're going to do is we're going to be installing that in our devices. So let's wait until this is done, and I'll show you once it's up and running. So it looks like it's completed. It also opened up my Xcode. So what I'm going to do is I have my iPhone connected. I also have my iPad connected. So I already built this, but you're you know more than welcome. All you need to do is just click on Play. You also need to change how you change, you set up your certificates. I'm hoping that you already know how to do this. If you haven't done this before, make sure that you watch my previous videos on setting up a provisioning profile, which is basically going to walk you through that process. I'm just going to do it right now, enable automatic. And then I already have my certificates and everything set up. So all I need to do is just select the team and then click play. And that's going to build it to my device. All right, guys. So this finished building. And you guys can see that now I have my iPad displaying. So I'm just going to go ahead and open it up. And this is the first thing that you're going to see. You're going to see that it's going to ask us for IP addresses that are available. I'm going to be using the 192.168.40.100. So if we go back into Unity and we go into the actual plugin that we downloaded, we're going to have to basically go into resources. For some reason, it's just loading right now. Let's just give it a second. All right, looks like it's finished. Let's go ahead and go into resources settings. And you're going to see that we have different options in here. We can specify the IP address of the AR Companion app. So in our case, we need to go into the 192.168.40.100. So we're just going to do 40 and then 100. The port, it's going to be that by default. You don't have to change it. This is really important right now. And, and the reason why I want to mention this is because it's going to be the resolution of the video that you're going to see in Unity. And I left this by default 200 by 400 and also 95. If you want to change it, make sure that you change it. But it's going to create latency, so it might not be you know, as fast as, as it would be right now. And the developer recommends that you leave this set as default. But if you want to change it, make sure you rebuild the actual Companion app, because this is going to be settings that are set on the Companion app and not much on the Unity side. So change it, you know, rebuild it, and then test it. And you can see how that works. So now that we have that set, we can go into the actual scenes that he has as examples. And we can start looking at different ones. We can look at, let's go ahead and look at one of the face scenes. I think those ones are cool. And then I'm going to hit play, and let's see if everything that I did work. And let's see. Yep, looks like the face example is working. You can see that I can move my face. One of the cool things about this as well is I can go into the scene view. And this is something that is you know, mind-blowing because, you know, as you guys know, we couldn't do this, do this before. But now we can do it. And I did a lot of videos where this was one of the features that you know, I really wanted to have because it's so hard to develop for AR without something like this. So we know that this works, right? You can see the face there. So let's go ahead and look at a different one. I'm going to do the switch between plane, plane detection and face tracking. I think this is a cool, a cool little scene. And I think the plane detection is the default. Yeah, it looks like it is. You guys can see how the planes are getting generated. The point clouds are also getting generated. You can see my camera, how it has different points. And I can move you know, everything around. And it's working. Let me go ahead and move it to this side. And I can also, I think there's actual couple anchors in here that we can set. It looks like this one doesn't have it. This is just to demonstrate. But I can change it to, if I wanted to do face detection, you guys can see my face now. 
which is which is really cool. So we just swap from you know plane detection to phase detection, so that works fine. Let's go ahead and do another one that I think you're gonna like a lot. Let's go ahead and do anchors. I think this is the anchors example. Yep. Let's go ahead and hit play. And this one is gonna use plane detection. We're gonna be able to also place an anchor. And let's just wait until that is. There we go. You guys can see how I'm placing different anchors. So, which is cool again, because we can see here what's happening and we don't have to be building in order for us to see what's happening, which is, yeah, again, this is, this is really awesome. We can go close to it. We can see, you know, everything right in, right within Unity. So the last one that I'm gonna do is gonna be the meshing, which is the one that only supported by the leader. So I'm gonna go ahead and open that up. It's gonna be, actually, I'm gonna do two more. One of them is gonna be the meshing one and the other one is gonna be the actual image tracking. So let's go ahead and hit play and see how meshing works. And let's see if this works right now. And if it doesn't, oh, there we go. I think I have a couple of things from the previous, but that's fine. We can, so you can see how meshing works. I have a couple of planes in there that are remaining from the previous demo. So I can just, you know, scan everything and we can just scan this right as well. And we know that meshing it's now working. There we go. So meshing works with the leader, which is also pretty awesome. So, and then the last one that I want to show you, it's going to be image tracking. So you can also use this plugin with image tracking. So we can go into the actual, let's see, let me go into the examples. And the image tracking one is going to be this one. I got to find out where the images are. So I'm just going to go ahead and double click here. There we go. It's under assets and then images. And I'm just going to go ahead and double click on the Unity logo because that's the one that I'm going to be using for testing. Let's go ahead and put it right here. We can close out of this. I'm going to go ahead and hit play. Let me go ahead and do command tab to open it up. And there we go. And let me see if it, and there we go. You can, get, you can kind of see how the image is getting attached. And if I were to move this, the image is also going to move. So image tracking also works in the editor. And again, if you want to change the quality of the video and you want to try how that looks, then go ahead and test it by changing the video resolution under the settings that I just showed you a couple of minutes, a couple of minutes ago. And that's going to, it might improve, improve the video quality, but again, it might not be as fast to communicate with Unity. So that's everything that I wanted to show you guys. If you guys have any questions about this and make sure that you download this asset by using that link that I'm putting in the description. All right, guys, thank you for watching this video today. I really appreciate your time. If you guys have any questions about anything that I just mentioned, please let me know in the comments. And also be sure to check out my patreon.com site where I'm basically posting what I'm doing behind the scenes and also early access source code. Thank you very much, guys.